Hello everyone! Welcome to our Blender Beginners tutorial. In this episode, we'll go over a bit of the interface, as well as navigating the 3D workspace and some basic object transforms. So, what is Blender? Blender is a free open source 3D modeling program. And by free, I mean totally free. Not sign up and put in your credit card info to get a demo of a quarter of the program free, but go to blender.org and download the complete program now free. They don't even want your email. It's an absolutely wild program that you can do all sorts of things in, such as 3D modeling, 2D and 3D animations, simulations, video editing, VFX, compositing, and that's just scratching the surface. Blender's user base is constantly growing. More and more professionals are switching over every day. When you open Blender for the first time, you'll have this splash screen with some quick setup options. You can choose your language, which mouse button to select with, what the spacebar does, etc. By default, mouse selection is left click, which is consistent with most other programs. So it might be more intuitive to use. If you're a select with the left user, then right click will be your contacts menu, which is just a handy little menu that has a lot of tools gathered in an easy to access location. If you change to select with right, then W will become your context menu by default. You can always change these options by going into the edit preference menu, as well as change pretty much anything else you could think of. Once you close the splash screen, you'll see something similar to this. There is a lot going on in Blender, and you don't by any means need to know what all this is before you can start making stuff. But in an effort to alleviate some of the overwhelmingness, I'll just briefly go over what most of the stuff in the interface is, and then we'll get to actually making some objects. First, and most importantly, how do I move? Take your cursor and put it over this big main part of the window, or viewport, with the cube in it. Click your middle mouse button and drag your mouse around. If you hold shift while doing this, you pan back and forth or up and down. Scrolling your mouse wheel zooms you in and out. That's the basics of moving yourself around in a scene, and one of the most frustrating things to not know how to do when you first open up Blender. This main Blender window is divided into panels officially called areas. You can resize these areas by dragging their borders with the left mouse button when you see the double-headed arrow icon. When you place your mouse in a corner of an area, it changes into a plus sign. Dragging from a corner inward will split that area into two. The split will be vertical or horizontal depending on which way you drag. Similarly, dragging from a corner outward will join two areas into one. You can only join areas that have the same width or height in whichever way you're dragging. If you hold shift while making a new area, it will detach from Blender, so you can move it around freely or move it to a second screen if you have them. You can change the editor type of an area by clicking the drop down menu in the upper left hand corner and choosing a different editor. This main big area is called the 3D viewport. It's where we do most of the modeling, texturing, rigging, and animating. This area is called the outliner. It shows us all the objects in our scene in a nice organized list. You can select your objects and toggle various restrictions on your objects and collections. You can also use the outliner to manage all the data in your blend file. Uh... This area is called the properties. This one has a lot going on with it. There's quite a few tabs. The first tab is the tool tab. It has all the tool settings for your currently active tool. These next five tabs are your scene properties. We'll cover those in greater detail when they're relevant. This next group of buttons are the object properties. Here you can see the object's relations, if it has any transforms, what collections it's part of, etc. Next is the modifier tab, which is an incredibly important tab to become familiar with. We have a bunch of modifiers we can add to our objects, which allow us to non-destructively change our object's geometry in various ways. Modifiers change how an object is displayed and rendered, but don't affect the geometry that you directly edit. We'll go over what these modifiers do in a separate tutorial, just know for now that they're very useful. Next tab is where you set up particle systems, such as smoke, dust, fire, or hair systems that can be used to make grass or fur, or really anything that will set your computer on fire. Then there's the physics tab, which will allow you to simulate real-world physics, which is also a really good way to make your computer explode. The Object Constraint tab allows you to add constraints that control an object's properties. They're mostly useful for, but not limited to, animation. The Object Data tab changes based on the active object's type. There's different types of objects, it's not important right now. You can set up vertex groups, shape keys, UV maps for texturing, face maps for quick rigging, texture spaces for adjusting automatically, generate UV maps for texturing, remix is cool for rebuilding, geometry with uniform topology sounds cool, I don't use it very often though. Then the best tab, the Material tab. This works in tandem with the Shader Editor. 
Materials determine an object's color, texture, if it's shiny, metal, rough, or reflective, it determines what substance an object is made of, which is super important. I love it. It's super fun to texture things. I love it. We already covered how to move with your middle mouse button. Now we'll go over some keybinds that orient you in specific directions. Number pad 5 will change you between perspective view and orthographic. Perspective view is helpful for seeing your object in three-dimensional space, with normal art stuff dealing with perspective like vanishing point. In orthographic view, objects stay the same size regardless of their distance from the camera, which is incredibly helpful to line things up while modeling. Number pad 1 is front view. Number pad 3 is right view. Number pad 7 is top view. Number pad 9 will flip your camera view 180 degrees. And control reverses these. So, control numpad 1 is back view, control numpad 3 is left, and control numpad 7 is bottom. Also, you can always see what view you're in in the top left of the 3D viewport. Okay, let's select our cube, use left or right mouse button depending on what you chose on the initial splash screen, and click the cube. If you click on an empty space in the viewport, you'll deselect the cube. Or, left click the cube in the outliner to select it. With the cube selected, hit G to grab the cube, and then move the mouse around. Right click or hit escape to cancel, or left click and place the cube somewhere else. If you accidentally place the cube somewhere, or want it back to where it was before, hit Ctrl Z, the universal keybind for undo. With the mouse over the 3D viewport, hit N to bring up the transform menu. Switch to the item tab if you aren't on it. Hit G or grab and move the cube around. Notice how the numbers under the location transform are changing. Right click to cancel. If I click and drag in the X location slider, the object will only move along the X axis. The same goes for the Y and Z. So now with the mouse over the viewport, hit G and then Z. And notice how the cube is restricted to moving on the Z axis while moving the mouse. It's the same if you hit G and then Y or G and then X. Your movement becomes locked to a single axis. Now hitting G and Shift X locks you out of the X axis. You can move along the Z and Y, but not the X. The same applies with G and Shift Y and Z. Now with the cube still selected, hit R and move the mouse to rotate the cube. While rotating, hitting X, Y, or Z will lock your rotation to that axis. You can see in the upper left hand corner of the viewport what kind of transform you're applying to your object currently. Now hit S to scale the cube. You can lock the scale transform to an axis as well, by hitting X, Y, or Z after S. Sometimes one cube just isn't enough, so add another object by hitting Shift A and selecting Cube under the Mesh tab. Grab it on the Z axis maybe, scale it a bit. Look, it's a thing! You may have noticed there are a bunch of other things you could add with Shift A, so add as much stuff as you want to your scene and transform it to your heart's content. This will get you started. Now that you know how to move around and do some of the basic transforms, you're well on your way to using Blender. Thank you for watching! Hopefully this helps you on your Blender journey. Join us next time when we learn how to make the single most common and important thing a modeler can create. A Minecraft cow. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye.